Thou hast cast us off. Thou hast cast us off. Thou hast scattered us. Thou hast scattered us. Thou hast been displeased. Thou hast been displeased. O turn thyself to us again. O turn thyself to us again. Thou hast made the earth to tremble. Thou hast made the earth to tremble. Thou hast broken it. Thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof. Heal the breaches thereof. For it shaketh. For it shaketh. Thou hast showed thy people hard things. Thou hast showed thy people hard things. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee. That it may be displayed because of the truth. That it may be displayed because of the truth. Say la. Say la. That thy beloved may be delivered. That thy beloved may be delivered. Say with thy right hand. Say with thy right hand. And hear me. And hear me. Give us help from trouble. Give us help from trouble. For vain is the help of man. For vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly. Through God we shall do valiantly. For he, for he it is. For he it is. That shall tread down our enemies. That shall tread down our enemies. Our scripture reading was from Psalms 60, verse 1 through 5, and verse 11 and 12. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Brother Jerome for an excellent scripture. And in line with today's topic, the topic of today's lesson, brothers and sisters, is the curses identify the true Israelites. This is the last Sabbath in the month of February. And all month long, I hopefully you've been receiving some black history, as they call it. It occurred to me, brothers and sisters, while putting this lesson together, that we actually teach black history every time we open up our Bible. It is black history, brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, the first five books in this Bible were written by a man that we're going to find out later on it, uh, that he looked like an Egyptian, and that was Moses. He wrote the first five books. He looked like an Egyptian. What do the Egyptians look like? They are dark-skinned people, brothers and sisters. A dark skinned people. So we're going to start this lesson out. We're going to take our time, brothers and sisters, and we're going to find out that when God uh, separated the children of Adam, brothers and sisters, he gave each and every one of them their own country, brothers and sisters, their own nation, brothers and sisters. Everybody had a land. <clears throat> Understand? Everybody had their own specific land. And we're going to let the Bible do a lot of talking. I have some research papers that we're going to use as well. But we're going to start this out in Genesis, the 10th chapter. Genesis, the 10th chapter. We're going to be in Genesis for a minute, brothers and sisters. This Genesis 10, this starts after the flood, brothers and sisters. Uh, the, uh, the children of, of God had gotten wicked, brothers and sisters, and he destroyed them with the flood, brothers and sisters. The only eight people to make it across the flood were Noah, his sons, and their wives, brothers and sisters. We're going to pick it up in Genesis 10 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them sons were born, and unto them sons were born after the flood, the sons of Japheth. Goma and Magog and Madai and Javon and Tubal and Meshach and Titus and the sons of Goma, Ashkenaz and Ripha and Tagorma and the sons of Javon, Elisha and Tarshish and Kittim and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles dividing in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families in their nation. I want you to get that, brothers and sisters. I want you to pay particular attention to what he said there, and you're going to hear this repeated about three or four times in the next few verses, brothers and sisters. Read that verse 5 again, my brother, please. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their land. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their what? Land. In their lands. How, how And how did that go? Everyone after his Everyone tongue. after his tongue, go ahead. After their family. After their family. In their nations. And in their nations. Read that next verse. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Foot, and Canaan. 
and the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. Go over to verse 15 and continue. And Canaan begat sight in his firstborn. So Canaan had, so Canaan had a, a, a son, and he begat sight in his firstborn. Go ahead. And Heth, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite. These are nations of peoples, brothers and sisters. The Jebusites and the Gergesites and the Amorites, these are nations. Go ahead. And the Hivites, and the Archites, and the Sinites, and the Arbidites, and the Zamorites, and the Hamathites. And afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. So the Canaanites, they were, they were in a particular land. After that, after they began to spread out, they spread out, brothers and sisters. They migrated somewhere. Go ahead. 19. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest, unto Sodom and Gomorrah, and Agma, and Zot. Zebulun, Zebulun, even unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read that next verse. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of ever, the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. So we just took care of two of the brothers. We took care of Japheth and we took care of Ham. I want you to skip down to verse 31 and continue. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the sons of Shem. I want you to get this because the Lord is pushing this. He's hammering this home, brothers and sisters. He's letting us know that the nations were divided. And how were they divided? After their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations, brothers and sisters. Everybody had a land, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. I want you to go on into uh, Genesis 11 chapter and pick it up at verse 1. Continue. And the whole earth was, the, was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. So there was only one language, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. <coughs> and they had brick for stone, and slime had they for water. Skip down to verse 9. Therefore is the name of it called Babylon. No, no, no. You know what? I want you to pick it up. At verse 7, go to, let us go down, and there confound their language. This is the Lord speaking. He's speaking to the angels. He said, go to, let us go down, and there confound their language. Go ahead. That they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. The Lord confounded the language of all the earth. At one particular time, they all spoke the same language, brothers and sisters. After he scattered them, brothers and sisters, he scattered their tongues as well, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begat all facts had two years after the flood. And Shem lived after the after he begat Arphaxad 500 years and begat sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived five and thirty years and begat Selah. And Arphaxad lived after he begat Selah 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And understand something, brothers and sisters. We read it about five times, brothers and sisters. These are nations of people, brothers and sisters, that we're talking about here. 
skip down to verse 16 and continue. And ever lived four and thirty years and begat Peleg. And ever lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years and begat. Ruth. That's good. And ever lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years and begat sons and daughters. You can beget a lot of sons and daughters after four hundred thirty years, don't you think? Yes. Lots of sons, lots of daughters after four hundred thirty years, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse 22. And Surug lived 30 years and begat Nahor. And Surug lived after he begat Nahor 200 years and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haram. And Terah lived... 70 years, and he begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Go ahead. Now, these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives and named a, the name of Abram's wife was Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, and the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarah was barren, she had no child. Sarah was barren, she had no child, brothers and sisters. Let's skip over to generation the seventh generation. Genesis the 17th chapter. We're tracing genealogies, brothers and sisters, and lineages of nations, brothers and sisters. Genesis, the 17th chapter, and I want you to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him. This is that same Abram, the son of Terah, right? And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, go ahead. And said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And I will most oh, I am so sorry, group. I, I I I apologize. Go back, brother. I skipped the verse. I skipped something. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. Chapter 12. Go back to Genesis chapter 12. And pick it up at verse 1. My apologies. Genesis 12. And one. Go ahead. Now, the Lord had said unto Abel, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. And I will bless them that bless thee. Go ahead. And curse him that curse And thee. curse him that curseth thee. Go ahead. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And in thee, Abram, shall all families of the earth be blessed. In thee, Abram, shall all families of the earth be blessed. Go ahead, read. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, unto the plain of Moray, of Moriah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. Well, the Canaanite was then in the land. Why was the Canaanite then in the land? Because it was their land. Is that right? He divided to the nations their, their lands into their nations after their tongues, after their families. And the Canaanites, they had a land, brothers and sisters. So the Lord has Abraham to go into the land of Canaan. He's going to tell him something here. Keep reading. Verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Unto your seed, Abraham, Abram, will I give this land. But ain't that the land of Canaan? 
That's the land of Canaan, right? That land belongs to the Canaanites. But the Lord said unto you, Abram, I'm going to give this land. Ain't nothing nobody can do about that. God called it. It's God's land. God gave it to whosoever he will. Amen. He divided to them their, 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 their languages, their tongues, in their nations, brothers and sisters. So God decided that he was going to give to Abram the land of Canaan. Ain't nothing you can do about that. God said, go ahead and read. And there built he an altar unto the Lord and appeared unto him. Let's go to Genesis, the 17th chapter. God decided that he was going to give to Abram the land of Canaan. To Abram and his seed was he going to give to the land of Canaan. Genesis, the 17th chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. Now remember, Sarai was barren. How are you going to, how are you going to have a nation when you, the, the, the woman that you're married to can't have any children? Something's wrong with that. You can't have any uh, uh, generations after you if your woman can't, if your wife can't bear any children. Gen uh, Genesis 17, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee and see exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. But he, his wife is barren. How are you going to be a father of many nations when his wife can't have any children? As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Go ahead. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. That's what Abraham means, a father of many. Go ahead. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give to I will give unto thee. And to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger. They were a stranger, brothers and sisters, because that land belonged to the Canaanites. Go ahead and read. All the land of Canaan. All the land of Canaan. Go ahead. For an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And I will be their God. I want you to go into the last two million years, brother, and pick it up at page 81. Now, you find a lot of people, brothers and sisters, that don't believe anything about the Bible. They don't read it at all, but they'll read everything else up to and including their astrology every day. But you can find something and put it in a book, brothers and sisters, and they'll read that. So we found something about Abraham in a research book that we use called The Last Two Million Years. And he's reading from page 81 uh, of The Last Two Million Years. Go ahead and read, bro. The coastal land settled by... The Western Semites are known as Canaan. In whoa, the whoa, whoa. Let's, let's, let's examine that just a second. The, the Western what? The Western Sem Semites. Semites. Shem. These were the lineage of Shem, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Are known as Canaan in the Bible. And much of the Old Testament is a record of the struggles between the earliest Canaanites and later immigrants who fought them for those immigrants were the Israelites, brothers and sisters, go ahead and read. Who fought them for occupation of the best lands. Among these later immigrants were the Hebrews, who, led by Abraham, reached Canaan from Mesopotamia about 1950 B.C. Eventually, by 1150, the Canaanites were pressed into the narrow coastal strip of present-day Lebanon. Did not God say... He unto, unto you, Abraham, and unto your seed, will I give this land? That's biblical. Go ahead. This is, this is just confirming that, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Where they became known as the uh, Phoenicians. Phoenicians. In about 600 B.C., a great famine drove the Hebrews to Egypt, but they returned in 1200. Canaan was the promised land of the Hebrews. And, and their 12 tribes settled in the area known as Palestine. Palestine. Thank you, brother. 
Now let's get back to our Bible. So the Bible, I mean, the history book confirms what we read in our Bible, brothers and sisters. Just in case you run across somebody that doesn't believe anything that the Bible says, you can take them there and let them know that the land of Canaan belonged to the Israelites, brothers and sisters. It's in their history book. Let's go back to Genesis, the 16th chapter. Genesis 16. Okay. Chapter 16. Yeah. Genesis 16. Yes, ma'am. I, 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 I got it too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, though. Genesis, the 16th chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Now, Sarai, Abel's wife, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abel, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go, on, uh, go in unto my maid. It may, be that I, it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Who, whose idea is this? Did, did, wait, did this come from God or did this come from Sarai? It came from God. Pardon me? Sarai. It came from Sarai. Sarai? Yeah. Know. Read it again, brother. Verse 1. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had and had made an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. Oh, okay. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. The Lord done restrained me from bearing. In other words, I can't have any children. Go ahead. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, <clears throat> after Abram had dwelt ten years, in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. When she saw that she was pregnant, brothers and sisters, uh, she despised Sarai in her eyes. Go ahead. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. Watch this, what Abraham is going to do. This, this lets you know that he had a whole bunch of wisdom. Watch this next verse. Go ahead, read. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do, as it, do to her as it pleases thee. He got himself out of that, brothers and sisters. Wait, your maid is in your hand. Do unto her as it pleases thee. I ain't got nothing to do with this. You, you came up with the idea to give her to me in the first place. Now, the results of this is she is pregnant. It ain't my fault because you gave her to me to be my wife. So now you deal with it. And what's going to happen? Read the next, the next sentence. Go ahead. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. She fled from her face. She fled, and the angel of the Lord saw her, and he asked her where you going, where you come from, and where you going to go. Skip down to verse 11. Go ahead. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And, and he will be a wild man. His hand will, will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And he, should, and he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. These are the people that we call the Arabs, brothers and sisters. They live what we call the Middle East, brothers and sisters. They are all compacted right there together, brothers and sisters. And he tells you that 12 princes will he beget, brothers and sisters. And they all live right there in what is called the Middle East. Uh, let's go skip down to verse 15. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called, and Abram called his son, his son's name, which Hagar bare, Ishmael. And Abram bare, and Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare, Ishmael. Let's move on a little bit further. 
Let's go to Genesis, back to Genesis, the 17th chapter. Genesis 17. And we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Genesis 17 and verse 15. Go ahead and read. And God said unto Abraham, as for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarai sh shall her be name but Sarah. But Sarah shall her name be called. Shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. We are still talking nationalities, brothers and sisters. We're talking lineages of people, brothers and sisters. Now he says right here that Sarai was going to be a mother of nations. Kings of people are going to come out of her. Go ahead and read. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? And, Ab and Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Ishmael, this is my firstborn. Ishmael, this is where the, the, the inheritance goes to the firstborn, brothers and sisters. So he's saying, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. This is my firstborn son, so all the blessings that I, I'm going to receive should go to my firstborn son. Go ahead and read. And God said, Sarai, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall, be, shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great what? Nation. nation. We're talking nationalities, uh, brothers and sisters. We're talking nationalities of people. Twelve, twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. Genesis, the 25th chapter. Genesis 25. God repeats the same thing over and over again maybe with a little caveat or just a little bit different to make sure that we get it. You understand what I'm saying? He wants us to understand it. We've read at least seven times how he divided the nations, brothers and sisters, and gave them to lineages of people. He made a change. The land of Canaan, he took that from the Canaanites and he gave that to the Israelites, brothers and sisters. Genesis, the 25th chapter. Let me rephrase that. He gave that to Abraham and to his seed. Genesis 25, and pick it up in verse 16. Go ahead, brother. These are the sons of Ishmael. These are the sons of Ishmael. Go ahead. And these are their names, by their towns and by their castles, 12 princes according to their nation. 12 princes according to their what? Nations, nations brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And these are the years of the life of Ishmael, a hundred and thirty and seven years, and he gave up the ghost and died, and get, and was gathered unto his people, and they dwelt from Havilah unto Shur, that is before Egypt, as thou goest toward Assyria, and he died in the presence of his of all his brethren. Didn't the Lord say he was going to live in the presence of all his brethren, and he died in the presence of all his brethren, brothers and sisters? Go ahead, and read. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Assyrian, of Padanaram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated, entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, 
and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a So now, man. so now, Isaac is getting ready, mm -hmm. Isaac is having some children, and, and his wife, Rebecca, she had twins. The first name was Esau, and the second name was Jacob. Go ahead and read. And Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. So it doesn't give a description of what Jacob looked like, but it tells us that Esau was uh, Esau is red. Go ahead and read. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Esau. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Edom means red, brothers and sisters. And Jacob said, sell me, sell me this day thy birthright. Go ahead. And he, he, didn't, he didn't steal it. He sold it to him. Go ahead and read. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swear unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. All he asked for was the beans, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And he gave, and he did eat and drink, and rose up, and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. He despised it, brothers and sisters, because he sold it for a bowl of beans. It couldn't be very important to him if he just sold it for a bowl of beans, brothers and sisters. Thus he despised it, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to... Uh, Genesis, the 27th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30. In that 26th chapter, brothers and sisters, uh, I'm going to skip that. Let's go to Genesis chapter 27 and pick it up at verse 30. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet, yet scarce, yet scarce gone out from the presence of so Isaac. So Isaac had told Esau to go out into the field and fetch him some venison and bring it back that he could bless him. And Rebekah, uh, their mother, heard when, when, when Isaac told him that, and she told Jacob to go and fetch uh, some goats out of, the, out, of the, out of the pasture and bring them back and she was going to fix his father some some food so that he could get the blessing that he bought. The blessing that he bought, brothers and sisters, not, not something that he contracted with his brother for. His brother sold it willingly for a bowl of beans, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 30 at the top. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his You know father. what? You know what? We got time. Let's, let's back up. Let's back up a little bit. Back up, back up, back up. Back up to verse 20. Back up to verse 28. Go ahead and read. This is the blessing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord. The people that call themselves the Israelis this is what they want, brothers and sisters, and this is what they get. 
Let nations bow down to thee, brothers and sisters. Nations of this planet, brothers and sisters, are always giving to the Israelis because they think that the Israelis are the people of exactly. the Bible, exactly. brothers and sisters. They think that they are the people that God gave the blessings to. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. Go ahead. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that he saw his brother came in from hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of, my, and, and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. Hold on a second. Now this cat here, mm -hmm. he is perpetrating a fraud. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? He is trying to take something that he already has sold, brothers and sisters. He's trying to take something that he sold already. Go ahead and read. 32. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten all, eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him, yea, and he shall be blessed. Well, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait a minute, man. Hold on. What did he say? Yea, he shall be blessed. That is etched in stone. Ain't nothing nobody can do about that. When the world went forth out of Isaac's mouth, and the blessing came to Jacob, that was etched in stone. And Esau knew that. And tell you what, how I know he knew that. Watch what's going to happen. Keep reading. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtility and have taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is it not he rightly? Is not he rightly named Jacob? Hold on a second, brothers and sisters. This could have ended very soon. It could have ended easy. All Esau had to say was, Dad, I sold the blessing to Jacob for a bowl of beans, and what we're reading now wouldn't have even had to take place. You understand what I'm saying? But go ahead and continue. For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. Did he take away his birthright or did he sell it? So, Go ahead and read. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. Well, guess what? The blessing came with the birthright. Hello? Now you want something that, that, that you can't get because it came with the birthright. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and read. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren I have I all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father. Read that, bro. 38. Read. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Do you know what that means, brothers and sisters? That means that you will have the wealth, the riches of the earth, brothers and sisters. You will be in control of all the monetary systems that are on the planet. You are in control of all the money. Who runs the banks, brothers and sisters? The so-called Jews. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you 
said that was an oath, man. <laughs> the rock child, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And the, the dew of heaven from above. Verse 40. And by that, and by thy sword shalt thou live. And they are surrounded, brothers and sisters, by their enemies. And by thy sword shalt thou live, go ahead. And shall serve thy brother. And you're going to serve your brother, Jacob, go ahead. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion <coughs> that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Read the next verse. And Esau hated Jacob because of, of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Go ahead. And Esau said in his heart, the days of the days of mourning for my father are, are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. What are you going to do? You're going to slay his brother Jacob. You're going to slay him about something that he did. About something that he did, brothers and sisters. We're talking about lineages of people, <laughs> brothers and sisters. We're talking nationalities, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Genesis 32. I could have taught this lesson strictly from the Old Testament. But the scripture goes line upon line. <clears throat> and precept upon precept. So I threw a little New Testament in here just to conform to that. Genesis 32 and pick it up at verse 1. Now this is when uh, Isaac, had, Isaac had left. Uh, he had gotten that blessing and he had left his brother and went to his uncle's house and now he's getting ready to come back and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. And Jacob, Jacob rather, go ahead. And Jacob went on his way. And the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of, this, of that place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Hold it. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? Edom has a country, brothers and sisters. They had a land. Wasn't a nation divided into their languages and tongues, their families, and their nations, brothers and sisters? Edom had a land, brothers and sisters. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Keep reading. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. Skip down to verse 23. And he took them and sent them over the brook and set over that he had. So he separated the people that he was bringing back with him and he sent some over the brook to meet his brother. Go ahead. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. This man happens to be an angel, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh." And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for a prince, for as a prince has thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. What did he call him? He changed his name to what? Israel. Abram's name was changed from Abram to Abraham. Sarai's name was changed from Sarah. I mean, Sarai to Sarah, and Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. To Israel. Now, understand something, brothers and sisters. 
I think I'll hold off on that for a minute. Let's go to, you finished your 28, my brother? Uh, let's read it again. Read that, brother. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. I'm going to let y'all come up here and do this lesson. <laughs> All right, go ahead. 29. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask Let's after my name? Chapter 28. Yes, Let's sir. move on a little bit further. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the second chapter. Deuteronomy, chapter 2. We established some, some groundwork, brothers and sisters. We're identifying nations. Deuteronomy chapter 2. To let you know, brothers and sisters, that all nations had their own land, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy chapter 2. And you, Israel, you have your own land, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy 2 and 1. Go ahead, read. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, You have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir. And they shall Where do they dwell? In they Seir. dwell in Seir, Mount Seir. Go ahead. And they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land. No. The Lord is talking to Israel, brothers and sisters. He says, meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land. No. Go ahead. Not so much as a foot breath. Not, not so much as a foot breath of their land will I give you. Go ahead. Because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a what? A possession. That is their land. That is their country. That is their nation. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to... Um, Genesis, the 35th chapter. Genesis 35. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Genesis 35 and verse 9. Go ahead. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall be not called anymore Jacob, but Israel shall, thy, shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Ho, ho, ho. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What did he say to him? And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation... And a company of nations shall be of thee. Go ahead. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Well, ain't that the same thing he told Abraham? Go ahead and read. And the land which I give Abraham and Isaac, which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. What is the land, brothers and sisters? The land of Canaan. The land of Canaan, brothers and sisters. And didn't he tell Abram that unto you and your seed will I give this land, all the land of Canaan? Let's go to uh, Genesis, the 49th chapter. I could have just typed this lesson Genesis, huh? Genesis, the 49th chapter. Genesis 49. 
And pick it up, brother, in verse 1. Go ahead. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. He used both of his names there, brothers and sisters. He used Jacob and he used Israel. Go ahead. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Mm. Unstable as water. <laughs> Skip thou, down to verse 8. Go ahead. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Mm. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Understand something, brothers and sisters. You are not an Israelite unless you come from one of these 12 tribes, brothers and sisters. You are not a Jew unless you come from the tribe of Judah. All the 12 sons are Israelites, but only one son is Judah, and that's the tribe that you are called a Jew from, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Judah is a lion's well. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. This is Jesus, brothers and sisters, that you just read about there. Go ahead and read. Binding his foal unto the vine. Didn't they, didn't they go, didn't he send his disciples to go fetch him a foal and tell the man, say, uh, if, if he say anything to you, tell him that the Lord have need of it and he will thus send it. This is that, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And his sons and, and his ass. Excuse me. Oh. I hate to confuse you, brother, but I'm going to stop that at the top again. Go ahead okay. and read that. Verse 11. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass is coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Skip down to verse... Uh, Skip down to verse 28, brother. Verse 28. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And this is, and this is it, that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. I got to hammer this home, brothers and sisters. You are not, you are not an Israelite unless you come from one of these 12 sons. It is impossible for you to be an Israelite. Un Let me I have to check myself. You can be spiritual Israel, but you cannot be natural Israel unless you come from one of these 12 boys. Everybody got that? You are not an Israelite unless you come from one of these 12 sons of Jacob. There's no way possible for that to happen. Exodus the sixth chapter. I know I pushed this a lot of times in this lesson, brothers and sisters, but I wanted to make sure that we understood it, brothers and sisters. That God divided the nations to their own lands, brothers and sisters. Everybody, every nation had their own land. Exodus 6 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them, 
to give them the land of Canaan. That's the same promise that he made to Abraham, is that right? Go ahead and read. The land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out, of, out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to, to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it to you for an inheritance. I am the Lord. What's the land, brothers and sisters? Amen. The land of Canaan, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 16th chapter. The land of Canaan, brothers and sisters. The land of Canaan belongs to the Israelites, brothers and sisters. Because God said so. Wasn't nothing that they did of their own, brothers and sisters. But God determined that they were going to have the land of Canaan. Ezekiel 16. And I want you to pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 16 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy night nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother was a Hittite. These are some of the a Hittite. These were some of the people that were living in the land before the Israelites got the land. So he's telling us, brothers and sisters, if you read that correctly, that Jerusalem equals Canaan, brothers and sisters. Jerusalem is Canaan. Did you read that, or do you want me to have him read it again? Read it again, man. Pick it up at verse 1. Chapter 16, verse 1. And again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy birth and thy nativity, where you began that. Your beginnings were of the land of Canaan. Go ahead. Thy father was an Amorite. Your father was an Amorite. These were some of the people that were in the land. Go ahead. And thy mother and Hittite. And thy mother and Hittite. Go ahead. Let's, let's go back. And let's pick it up at Isaiah the 34th chapter. Isaiah 34. What we've learned so far, brothers and sisters, is going to make this very simple to understand, brothers and sisters. What we've learned so far is going to make this real easy for us to understand. Isaiah the 34th chapter, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. This is at his second coming, brothers and sisters. This is at Jesus' second coming. Go ahead. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a fallen fig from a fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. 
Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea. Idumea, brothers and sisters, that is just another name for Esau, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And upon the people of my curse to judgment, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord have a sacrifice in Basra. Basra is the capital of Edom, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorn shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's Vengeance. It is the day of the Lord's what? Vengeance. Vengeance, brothers and sisters. Why? Go ahead. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. There's a controversy, brothers and sisters. That controversy is being acted out as I speak, brothers and sisters. The controversy is simply this, brothers and sisters. Our uncle Ishmael and our brother Esau are over there fighting about our land, brothers and sisters. They are over there fighting about our land. As I speak, brothers and sisters, that is the controversy. And Israel does not have a clue as to where our land is at. If you take them and show them, brothers and sisters, what we're reading now, they won't believe it, brothers and sisters. They won't believe it. Your eyes and ears have to be open, brothers and sisters, to understand this. They won't believe it. Let's go to Exodus, the first chapter. I know y'all on track. They won't believe it. Until the Lord opens their eyes and ears. So Joseph's brothers sent them down, uh, sold him down into Egypt, brothers and sisters. And he went down into Egypt. And at the passage of time, there was a famine. And his brothers came up to see him, brothers and sisters. And then they understood that he was the second ruler in Egypt. We're going to pick it up. When Joseph is getting ready to die. Go ahead and pick it up at Exodus, the first chapter. And pick it up at verse 7, brother. No, I'm sorry. Pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead and read. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that great generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding, exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose a... And then, now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they fall of out of out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, this. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters, taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, as they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. That's Israel. Go ahead. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, brothers and sisters. I want you to take a look right here, brothers and sisters. You see these pyramids, brothers and sisters? Each one of those blocks of stone weighs 2,500 pounds, brothers and sisters. There are 2,330,000 of these stones at 2,500 pounds apiece. I have read that it took uh, 100,000 men 20 years to build these. Did they make them work with rigor, brothers and sisters? Yes, they did. 2,500 pounds apiece, 
each one of those stones, brothers and sisters. Where we at, brother? Verse 14. Read the 14. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. And all their ser all their service, where when they made them serve, was with rigor. Let's go into the second chapter of Exodus and pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 2 and 1, go ahead. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman Levi, conceived. that's one of his 12 sons, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And the woman conceived and bare his son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not and when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of burl rushes, bull rushes, bull rushes, and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. So she knew that it was one of the Hebrews' children. How did she know that? Because of the way it was dressed, brothers and sisters. That would be about the only difference because the Hebrews and the Egyptians, they look alike, brothers and sisters. They look alike, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse 11 and continue. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown. So what had happened was uh, she sent, she sent uh, Moses' sister back to fetch her mother, that her mother could nurse the child. And, and Moses grew up in his mother's house, brothers and sisters. And then she sent him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he was raised by her uh, continually. And pick it up at verse 11. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked. Hold it. So Moses knew that he was an Israelite, because he saw his brethren in toil, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. You see that? He said it twice, brothers and sisters, just so we would understand it. One of his brethren. So Moses knew that he was an Israelite. He grew up in his mother's house. He nursed on his mother's nipples, brothers and sisters. So he knew who his mother and his father were. Go ahead and read. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the, in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intend, intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Surely this thing is known. Snitches get stitches. <laughs> surely this thing is known. So Moses got him some hat and he took off and fled. Skip down to verse 16. Now the priests of Midian had The seven. Midianites, brothers and sisters, they are the seed of Abraham as well. Go ahead and read. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Not an Egyptian, but Moses the Israelite. Delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. Go ahead. And also drew water enough for us. And also drew water enough for us. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go into your Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, brother. Page 213. And we're going to pick it up where it says ham. Zondervan's Bible Dictionary, page 213. 
where it says Ham. Go ahead and read that. Ham, the youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor of the dark races. Progenitor, four or five. Go ahead. Not the Negroes. But not the Negroes, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. But not the Negroes. Ham, the progenitor of the dark races of people. So we know that Japheth is the father or progenitor of the people we call Caucasians, brothers and sisters. So who is the, the progenitor of the Israelites, brothers and sisters? Yeah. It is none other than Shem, brothers and sisters. We are Shemitic. Have you heard the word anti-Semitic, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yes, sir. The people that are saying the word anti-Semitic, brothers and sisters, they are not Semitic. They are not Semitic. They are Japhetic, brothers and sisters, meaning that they come out of the lineage of Japheth. We're talking lineages. We're talking nationalities, brothers and sisters. And understand something. This is not against anyone. This lesson is not about salvation. It is about identification, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Acts, the 21st chapter. Acts, chapter 21. Now we're over in the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Moses looked like an Egyptian. And I had a poster someplace. I had a poster somewhere. I had a poster with me in the Egyptian. Do you remember? Acts chapter 21. Acts 21. So we find out that Moses, the Israelite, looked like an Egyptian, brothers and sisters. Now let's go and take a look at Brother Paul. Acts 21 and pick it up in verse 37. Go ahead, brother. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said? Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made up an uproar and lead us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? So now, the, the, the captain of the host is asking Paul, Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? Go ahead. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tyrus. But Paul oh. says, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. Go ahead. A city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So Paul said, I'm a Jew, man. I'm an Israelite. I am not an Egyptian, brothers and sisters. That's what he's saying to him. Let's go to uh, Amos the ninth chapter. Amos, it's over there by Obadiah, Joel, Amos chapter 9,
Amos chapter 9. We're going to read one verse. Verse 7. Amos 9 and 7. Go ahead. Are you not as children of the Ethiopians unto me? Well, wait, 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 wait. Didn't we read when we were reading about Ham that the, the, the Ethiopians come out of the Hamite lineage? Yes. Now, here he's asking the children of Israel, are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me? Go ahead. O children of Israel, saith the Lord, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Capthor and the Syrians from Kerr? Understand, brothers and sisters, that the Israelites look like the Ethiopians and they look like the Egyptians. Dark race of people, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Romans, the ninth chapter. Romans chapter 9. Romans the ninth chapter. We keep this up, brothers and sisters. I'm gonna have to add a few more scriptures and we'll keep you out here for a while. Mm. Mm -hmm. Seven. Yeah. All day. Okay. You heard him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know about Paul, how he how he taught. He taught so long that the, the little brother fell out the window. Mm -hmm. Romans the ninth chapter. This is Paul talking. And he's gonna tell us something here. Pick it up at verse one, nine and one. Go ahead. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory. What do you call them? Israelites. They're his his kinsmen, his kinsmen according, according to, to the flesh. This is this is not spiritual. This is natural, brothers and sisters. He says, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are what? Israelites. Go ahead. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? Whoa. Hold it. And of whom, as concerning the flesh, who came? Christ. Christ, Christ came. Christ is an Israelite, a dark skinned person. Right. Christ is an Israelite. Can you see now? When they call for the rocks to fall on them, brothers and sisters, when they see this brother bust through in the cloud, brothers and sisters, they're going to be scrambling. Oh, my God. I knew I did bad, but I didn't know I did this bad. Read that again for me, brother. Whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? Who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. That's good. That's good. Whose are the fathers? And of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. Who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. Let's go to Matthew's the first chapter. Let's find out what lineage Christ came through. <laughs> we know he was an Israelite. We know he was an Israelite. Let's check 
his lineage, brothers and sisters. Matthew, the first chapter, and we're going to read one verse here. Verse 1. Go ahead and read. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. The son of David. The son of David. The son of Abraham. The son of Abraham. Abraham began. Je Jesus is that seed unto which all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Brothers and sisters. Jesus is that seed, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus 19. Exodus 19. So we were in bondage, brothers and sisters, down in Egypt for 430 years. The Lord commissioned uh, Moses and Aaron to bring us up out. And now they have come up out. And the Lord is going to call for Moses to come back up into the mount. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Exodus 19 and 3. Go ahead. And Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if he will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then shall ye be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, and for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord have, have spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. I believe it's in Exodus 24 chapter where they said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do and be obedient, brothers and sisters. And that's the key. Obedience, brothers and sisters. That's what we have to do. We have to be obedient to the word, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to um, Exodus the 20th chapter. Now he commissioned them to be a nation of priests, brothers and sisters. Now he's going to give them... The covenant, brothers and sisters, that they were supposed to teach to the other sons of Adam. Go ahead and pick it up in Exodus, the 20th chapter, and pick it up in verse 1. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. What did he tell them? The very first thing he told them was, Thou should have no other gods before me. Skip down to verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt, six days thou labor, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the, thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. And you can find that in Genesis, the second chapter, uh, verse 2, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to... Uh, Skip down to verse 18. Go ahead and read. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you 
and that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. And you can go to 1 John, the third chapter, verse 4. And sin is the transgression of the law, brothers and sisters. Let's move on over to uh, 2 Kings, the 17th chapter. So what was the first thing he told them was? Thou should have no other gods before me. Second Kings 17, pick it up at verse 7. Go ahead. Hold on. Second Kings chapter 17. Second Kings chapter 17. You got enough of that to share with everybody, man? <laughs> Second Kings, the seventeenth chapter, and we're gonna pick it up in verse seven. Go ahead. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statue of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and the kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in, their, in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And the children of Israel did what? Secretly. She secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. They played themselves, brothers and sisters, because you can't do nothing that the Lord God does not know about, brothers and sisters. He got an innumerable number of angels around here that's watching everything that's done, brothers and sisters. So they played themselves. They thought they were doing something secretly. And they built them high places in all their cities, High places. These are places of worship from the tower of the watchman to the fence city. Go ahead. And they set them up in images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And these are places of worship. Go ahead. And there they burnt incense in all the high places and did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. Well, why did he kick the people out of the land in the first place? Because they were doing these things that the children of Israel think that they're doing secretly. That's why the nations got kicked out in the first place. Yes, sir. Now here Israel is, they saw that. Now here they are, they doing the same thing that the nations did before they before Israel went into the land. And they think they're going to get away with it. That's why they're doing this secretly. You know, if, 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 if you have nothing, if you don't have nothing to worry about, you can do anything openly. You understand what I'm saying? You can do it openly and stand on it. But they're doing it secretly. You know why they're doing it secretly? Because they know it's wrong. That's why they're doing it secretly. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places as did the nations whom the Lord carried away before them. Go ahead. For they served idols well. And before. they, excuse me, and brought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. Go ahead, brother. For they served idols where, whereof the Lord has said unto them, you should not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and, and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Now, notwithstanding, they would not hear. Notwithstanding, they would not hear. 
Just like when you bring it to them today, brothers and sisters, they will not hear, brothers and sisters, go ahead, but harden their necks, like to the neck of their fathers that, that did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenants that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. They left some of the commandments of the Lord their God. All of them. They left all of the commandments of the Lord their God. If you leave all of the commandments of the Lord their God, that means that you ain't doing nothing but wickedness. You ain't doing nothing right. If you leave all the commandments, you ain't doing the Sabbath day. You ain't doing the dietary law. You're not honoring your mother and your father. You're not, you're not doing nothing right, brothers and sisters. Everything you're doing is wrong, brothers and sisters. And you think you're going to do, you think you're going to do right and then turn around and do wrong and God going to let you get away with it? In other words, he tells you that you did worse than your fathers did. Still is. I was going to say that, sister. <laughs> that was my, that was, you, you read my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. And they do doing worse now than they've ever done. Killing, killing babies. Nine-year-old, nine-year-old little girl just Cat just walked up and, and, and shot her for no reason. There's no reason to kill nobody unnecessarily, brothers and sisters. But he just killed her for no reason. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God. And what did they do, uh, Jerome? And made them molten images, even two calves. And made a grove and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. They're making sure they got their uh, their astrology right, right? Serve all the hosts of heaven. Go ahead and read. And they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire. And you whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What did they do? And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. So they sacrificing their children in the fire to pagan daddies, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And use divination and enhancements. In enchantments. enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord, their God, but walked in the statues of Israel which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drove his, drained Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. What was, this, what was the great sin that he had them to sin, brothers and sisters? He proclaimed, he proclaimed a false feast on the 15th day of the eighth month, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Go ahead and read. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them, until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight. And as he said by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own lands to Assyria unto this day. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day, brothers and sisters. That's the ten tribes, brothers and sisters. The ten tribes were carried away unto Assyria unto this day, brothers and sisters. How many tribes is there in, Jer uh, in Israel, brothers and sisters? Twelve. So ten are in Assyria. Northern tribe. Yes, ma'am. So we got two left, right? Let's move on a little bit further. Now, if you want to find out who the children of Israel are, brothers and sisters, you go into this Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, brothers and sisters, 
and you find the conditions that are upon the children of Israel, and then you apply those conditions to a people. And when you apply those conditions and characteristics to a certain people, you will find out that those curses only fit one people. They are perfect in that sense, brothers and sisters. God set them that way so that you can have no doubt as to who the children of Israel are. The curses are just that perfect, brothers and sisters. Let's go and take a look at it. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 chapter. You don't have to guess who is it. Is it Esau or is it Ishmael or is Jacob the one or any of that, brothers and sisters? You just go to Deuteronomy 28 chapter and you find out the conditions that were going to be on the children of Israel and you apply those conditions to a people, and you will find out there's no other nation on this planet that fits those conditions. Right. None. Don't even come close. We could teach your brothers and sisters for a whole nother week about Israel. <coughs> we can. Let's pick it up at Deuteronomy 28 and pick it up. First he started out, brothers and sisters. He started out giving us some blessings, brothers and sisters. Let's read these blessings, man. Go ahead, pick it up at verse 1. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do his commandments, which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Anybody got a problem with that? No. Go ahead and read. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of and the Lord thy God. And even if you're trying to run and escape away from these blessings, the blessings are going to overtake you. Remember how he told he told him he told he uh what's the brother's name? He told Esau that Yay Jacob was gonna be blessed. And he shall be and he shall be blessed. These blessings are gonna overtake you, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket of thy store. Blessed shall be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Go ahead. The Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee, to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. And your enemies, if they come up against you, brothers and sisters, they're going to turn around and they're going to flee. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses. You ain't going to have no need or no want for nothing, brothers and sisters. He's going to have your storehouses filled up, brothers and sisters. All your shelves will be full. Go ahead and read. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Skip down to verse uh, 14 and read. And thou shalt know, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day. To the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day. To the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. The Lord God tells us we're not supposed to add anything to this word and we're not supposed to take anything away from it, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy the 32nd chapter. God keeps his word, brothers and sisters. He keeps his word. Deuteronomy 32. Pick it up at verse 8. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Go ahead. Hold on, brother. Deuteronomy 32, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Go ahead. 
when the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the tribes of Israel. Twelve tribes, brothers and sisters, twelve months in the year, twelve hours in the day, twelve hours at night. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the tribes of Israel, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Go ahead. We found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. And, and you are the apple of God's eye, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her and on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Well, the very first thing he told them was, that you had no other gods before me. Go ahead and read. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of and ram of the bread of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. We're talking top shelf stuff here, brothers and sisters. We ain't talking about no night train. We're talking about BSOPs and all that good stuff, brothers and sisters. We ain't talking no uh, white potent Kool-Aid. We ain't talking that. We're talking about the good stuff. Top shelf. You know how some of them brothers up at the camp, they be drinking them $300 bottles. At peace time. Yes, sir. You start for 14? Yes, sir. The end of 14. Okay, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. So he gave us the best of everything, brothers and sisters. We are the apple of his eye, brothers and sisters. And another scripture he tells you, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You, Israel. He also says that's why he's going to punish us for our sins, brothers and sisters. Because he chose us. That's right. Deuteronomy 28, we're going to pick it up at verse 14 again, and we're going to read 14 and 15, and then we're going to skip down. Pick it up at verse 14, brother. Go ahead. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Two choices, brothers and sisters. The same two choices that every man and woman has had on this planet. The same two choices that Adam and Eve had in the garden, brothers and sisters. You can either eat of the tree of life and live forever, or eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and die. Same two choices, brothers and sisters. Either you're going to, either you're going to do these commandments and get blessed, brothers and sisters, or you're going to do, not do these commandments and get cursed and die, brothers and sisters. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all of these curses shall come upon thee and do what? Overtake you. I don't care how fast you call yourself running, they're going to catch up with you, Israel. Skip down to verse... Uh, 45, verse 45. Go ahead and read that. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments 
and his statutes which he commanded thee. Why is these curses coming upon us, brothers and sisters? Because we stopped doing the commandments, brothers and sisters. Read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. What does a sign do, brothers and sisters? A sign points out something, brothers and sisters. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. Go ahead. And upon thy seed forever. So if you find the people that have these curses on them, brothers and sisters, that is a sign that they are the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32 again. And we're going to pick it up at verse 15. Deuteronomy 32 and 15. When you get it, brothers, go ahead and read. 32 and 15, go ahead. For Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Who is Jeshurun? That is another name for Israel, brothers and sisters. We are waxing fat. We are grown thick. Go ahead. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. And we forsook God which made us, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Didn't he tell us that should have no other gods before me? Go ahead and read. With abominations provoked him, they with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came new here, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them, and I will see what their end shall be. Well, you're in big trouble right there. Just by him hiding his face from you, brothers and sisters. That's that's trouble right there. Because then Satan got to open him, brothers and sisters. If it ain't the Lord, it's Satan, brothers and sisters. Ain't no in-between. Go ahead and read. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with their, with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Skip down to verse 26 and continue. I said, I will scatter them into corners. He's going to do what to us? Scatter them. He's going to scatter us in the corners, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. And he's going to make the remembrance of us to cease from among men. The only reason you sitting here now is because God called you, brothers and sisters. Right. Ain't nothing I did or nobody else did. God opened your eyes and your ears and your understanding to this word, brothers and sisters. Because the memory of us has ceased from among men. Go out there and ask, tell somebody that you're an Israelite and watch them fall out laughing. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, and I want you to pick it up in that 32nd chapter of uh, Deuteronomy. He said he was going to scatter scatter us in all corners, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy 28, pick it up at verse 25. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into the kingdoms of the earth. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Skip down to verse uh, 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in, the, in thy hand. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, brothers and sisters. And there shall be no might in thy hand, brothers and sisters. We make up 13% of the population, brothers and sisters. But we make up 38% of the penal institutions. And every brother and sister that's in the joint, brothers and sisters, is not there because they did something wrong.
Not there because they did something wrong. They're there because they're Israel. That's right. We used to be 15% of the people. Fifteen percent population in the world. Oh, but yeah, it went down. Yes, ma'am. It's been it going down. down. I said, look at that. Mm-hmm. Thirteen percent now. Let's move on a little bit further. <laughs> you finish at thirty-two. I finished at thirty-two. Yeah. That son yes. and that daughter yes, shall sir. be given unto 32. another people. Yeah, he finished. Okay, let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to uh, faith survived the dispersion, brother, in the last two million years. We're getting there, y'all. I was a little apprehensive about how long this lesson was going to be, but I see <laughs> we're doing it in the right time and manner. Did I say 87? <clears throat> He's reading to you from the last two million years. The subtitle is Faith Survived the Dispersion, page 87. You know, but I want you to read all of that. Okay? Go ahead and read. Faith Survived the Dispersion. The crucifixion of Jesus about AD 30 did not end Jewish resistance to the Roman occupation. In 70, when the country was again in a state of revolt, Jerusalem, the holy city, became the core of the resistance of the Romans, to the Romans. Titus, the son of Emperor Vespasian, proceeded to lay siege to Jerusalem. The city fell and the inhabitants were enslaved in their thousands and dispersed throughout the Mediterranean world. This was the first dispersion, and rose was and 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 worse was to follow. Continual insurrections and revolts against Roman rule led to the total destruction of Jerusalem in 135. The city was renamed Alia. Capitolina. Capitolina. Thank you, brother. <laughs> and all Jews were prohibited from entering in. Entering. All Jews were prohibited from entering into Jerusalem, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, read. A second and more important dispersion now took place, and the whole of Judea was renamed Palestine. The whole of Judea was named Palestine. After 70 AD, brothers and sisters, the Israelites, are, the true Israelites <laughs> are no longer in the land, brothers and sisters, because now what do we have, brothers and sisters? The, the ten tribes, they had been carted off, between 721, 722 BC. Now the two tribes, they're carted off into all nations. In 70 AD. So that's that's the whole nation, brothers. Is that correct, brothers and sisters? Yes. The whole nation is carted off, right? Okay. I want you to read Sarcophagus of an Ancient Civilization. After this, after this time when the uh, Emperor Vespasian besieged Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, something is going to take place. Go ahead and read that, brother. With the tragic fall of Jerusalem. With the tragic fall of Jerusalem, go ahead. The Idumeans, as a nation, passed pass off the stage of history and disappear uh. entirely from human sight. Oh, wow! How do you do that? How does a whole nation disappear from off the planet, brothers and sisters? I'll tell you how. They moved into the land, brothers and sisters. They assumed our identity and took our land, brothers and sisters. Obadiah is going to tell us about it in a little bit, brothers and sisters. I want you to go and read this from Jerusalem. Read everything that's highlighted right there, brother, for me. Go ahead and read. During its long history, Jerusalem has been destroyed at least twice, besieged 23 times, captured and recaptured 44 times, and attacked 52 times. Today, those walls define the old city, which has The been old walls, the retaining walls around the city 
Uh, go ahead and read. Which has been traditionally divided into four quarters, known since the early 19th century as the Armenian, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim quarters. Let's go to Obadiah. Thank you, brother. Let's go to Obadiah. So there's no other people on the planet, brothers and sisters, that fits the description that we've been reading about those curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, 15 to 68. Let's pick it up at Obadiah, it's just one book, right after Amos, Obadiah, and we're going to pick it up. At verse one, I had I had a handout to deal with, but I remember it, so I'll do it as we read. Go ahead and read the, the vision of, of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. And there's no other people on the planet that are more despised than, than, than Edom than us, brothers and sisters. No other people. And then he says he has made them small. They make up 0 0.02 of the pop world population, brothers and sisters. They are very small, brothers and sisters. They are very small. Skip down to verse, uh, you read, you finished two? Yes, sir. Skip down to verse eight and continue. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Taman, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For, they, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Did not he say the days of mourning for my father are at an end, and I will kill my brother Jacob? What is he saying here, brothers and sisters? Shall I not in that day, uh, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off. What happened, brothers and sisters, was when Vespasian uh, besieged Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, he allowed 20,000 out of men to go into the uh, Jerusalem and they destroyed everything that they could get their hands on, brothers and sisters. They killed without mercy, brothers and sisters. Keep reading. In the day that thou stood, and in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captives, his forces. And he's talking about 70 AD, brothers and sisters. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, go ahead. And foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou was as one of them. What was the lots, brothers and sisters? Well, you got the Armenian, well, how do you read that? Armenian, Christian, Jewish. Armenian, Jewish. Christian, Jewish. Yeah. Armenian, Christian, Jewish, and Muslim quarters, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Verse 12. But thou shouldest not have looked, thou, thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Well, wait a minute. What people did this happen to, brothers and sisters? Did it happen to Esau? No, it didn't, brothers and sisters. This happened to the children of Israel. Go ahead and read. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither should have thou have spoken proudly in the day of, of distress. Thou should have not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou should have not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. When Vespasian captured us and took us out of the land, all Israel, did, or all Edom did was move in and assume our identity, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Neither should, shouldst thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of, of his that did escape. Neither should 
neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of, of his that did remain in the day of, his, of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall, thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as he drunk upon... That's good, brother. That's good. You finished 15? Yes, sir. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Amos, the first chapter. Amos chapter 1. What I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters, is that each, each uh, nation, each group of people had their own land, brothers and sisters. They had their own land. Just bear with me a second. Before we go there, let's go here. Go to Psalm 137. You can keep your finger right there because we're coming right back. Amos first chapter. But we're going to go to Psalms chapter 137. Psalm 137. Psalms 137, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Who said, raise it. Raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Now let's go to Amos, the first chapter. Killing the babies. Killing babies. Sister, killing babies. Kind of like what they're doing now. Killing babies. And it's the first chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. That really worked out good. Watch this. Read this. Verse 11. Thus said the Lord, for there, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword. He did pursue his brother with the sword. He said, the days of mourning for my father are at an end, and I will kill my brother Jacob. Go ahead. And did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire upon Taman which shall devour the places of Basra, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. Ezekiel the 35th chapter. Ezekiel 35. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 35 and 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Who is Mount Seir, brothers and sisters? Esau. That's Esau. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Go ahead. And say unto it, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, 
O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto I will I will I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Skip down to verse nine. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, because thou hast said. These two nations and these two countries shall be mine. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. Go ahead. And we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. What two nations and what two countries, brothers and sisters? Israel and Judah. These two nations shall be mine. That is what the battle is. That is what they are fighting about, brothers and sisters. They are fighting about the land. That's what the whole fight about. If Ishmael said to Esau, hey man, I'm tired of fighting. You can have this land. It'll all be over. Or vice versa. The fight would stop. They want the land, brothers and sisters. Pick it up at nine. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. Remember now, he has his own land, is that right? His land is what? Mount Seir. Go ahead and read. Eleven. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. Thus, with your mouth, ye have boasted against me. I want y'all to catch that. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? He said, thus, with your mouth, ye have boasted against me. You understand what I'm saying? This is God's land. This is the land that he gave to us. This is his land. Thus, with your mouth, ye have boasted against me. Go ahead. And have multiplied your words against me. And have multiplied your words against me. We are the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. What is God's name, brothers and sisters? Israel. Israel. Go ahead and read. And I have heard them. And I have heard them. Go ahead. Thus says the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee desolate. When the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee desolate. Somebody call on is a Hyundai. Black. Where'd you stop at, bro? Beginning of 15. Go back and read 14 from me. Thus says the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee desolate. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel. What did they say? Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Go ahead. Because it was desolate. So will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all I do mayor, even all of it. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28, chapter. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. And we're going to pick it up at verse 49, Deuteronomy 28 and 49. 
When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from, from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flight, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation of... Skip down to verse uh, 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down, where when the, the, tr the trust is throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body. Go ahead. The flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God have given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee. Hold on right there. Read the next verse. Go ahead. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. So that, so that he will not give <clears throat> to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he have nothing left him <clears throat> in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates. This is going to happen to the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. This is one of the curses that is upon them, brothers and sisters. Did this happen to the children of Edom? No, it did not. Go ahead and read. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot among the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward her husband of her bosom and toward her son and toward her daughter and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet and toward her children, which, shall, which she shall bear, and she shall eat them for what for once of all things secretly in the siege and straightness. Where with thine enemy, Why is she eating them secretly? Because she want to fill herself up, brothers and sisters. She don't want to share. Go ahead and read. Where with thy enemies shall distress thee in, in thy gates. Let's go take a look at it. Let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Did this happen to the children of Israel, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yeah. You bet it did. 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. We're going to pick it up at verse 24. 2 Kings 6 and 24. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. And it came to pass after this that Ben Haddon, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there a great fam famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of doves dung for five pieces of silver. Wow. So they, 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 they eating unclean. They eating whatever they can get their hands on. They are eating it, brothers and sisters, because they are in a siege, brothers and sisters. So whatever moves, they're going to eat. Go ahead and read. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of, out, out of, the, ban, out of the barn floor or out of the wine press. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, this woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him, and she have hid her son. So she mad because the other woman hid her son. They ate her son, and now it's the next day, so she wants to she wants to eat her son. Go ahead, read. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes, and he passed by upon the wall. And the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth writ within upon 
within upon his flesh. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 chapter. So it came to pass, right? The children of Israel ate their children, brothers and sisters, in the siege, just like the Lord called it. Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Deuteronomy 28, and we're going to pick it up at verse 63. Deuteronomy 28 and 63. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoice over you to do good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And ye shall be plucked from off the land whether thou goest to possess it. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there shall, and and thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and a and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have none assurance of thy life. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it be even? And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning? Your life is going to be in doubt at all times, brothers and sisters. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even? And at even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning? Brothers and sisters, you never know if you're going to return home, brothers and sisters. You never know. Driving along the expressway, you just got off work, and somebody zoomed past and just started shooting, brothers and sisters. And kid, it just happened the other day. Go ahead and read. For the fear of thine, excuse me. <clears throat> for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. What does Egypt mean to Israel, brothers and sisters? It means bondage or slavery, brothers and sisters. And the Lord shall bring thee into bondage again with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt not see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Joel, the third chapter. Joel chapter 3. We're getting there, y'all. Joel chapter 3. Joel. 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 Sometimes in Mississippi getting away, don't you? Joel the third chapter. <clears throat> He's saying you shall be sold into Egypt for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you out from under my hand. Joel chapter 3, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead, brother. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people. They sold us on the auction block, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. I want you to read that over there for me. We got some, uh, we got some photos up here, brothers and sisters, that we're going to take a look at. I'm going to have Jerome read. I'm going to have Jerome read one of these little posters on here, brothers and sisters, to show you that this actually happened to us. Go ahead and read that, brother. To be sold. To be sold. One, on Tuesday, the third day of, of August, a cargo of 94 prime healthy Negroes. Prime, healthy Negroes. Go ahead. 
consisting of 39 men, 15 boys, 24 women, and 16 girls, just arrived in the Bragantine, Gambia, Francis Bear, May, May after, from Sierra Leone, by David and John Diaz. How did they get here, brothers and sisters? We got here in ships, brothers and sisters. This is the way they had packed us in here, brothers and sisters. They have one that they call a loose pack, brothers and sisters, and then they have one that they call a tight pack, brothers and sisters. That was, that way, on that tight pack, it had maybe 600 and some slaves on it, but they only expected half of those people to survive, brothers and sisters. With the loose pack, they expected to get a little bit more product over here to the, to, to the land. So one is tight pack and one is loose pack, brothers and sisters. This is how we got here. Go back to Joel, the third chapter. I want you to read verse 6 for me. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the, unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Ezekiel 36. I want you to read 17 through 19. And then skip down to 24. 17 through 19. And skip down to verse 4. Go ahead and read. Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Wait a minute. Hold it. Did anybody do this to us? Ain't nobody did this to us, brothers and sisters. We did this to ourselves. The reason that we're sitting in a foreign land today, this very moment, is because we messed up. Not nothing that nobody else did. Keep your fingers to yourself. You can't point at no. If you're going to point at somebody, point at yourself. <clears throat> Son of man. When the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Go ahead. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen. I scattered them among the nations. Go ahead. And they were dispersed throughout and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them. Because we would not keep his commandments, brothers and sisters. Skip down to verse 24. For I will take, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and I will bring you into your own land. And he's promising us that he's going to bring us back into the land, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, read. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. For all, from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my, my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I give you that I gave to your father. What land is that, brothers and sisters? The land of Canaan. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. Go ahead. And you shall be my people, and, and I will be your God. Skip down to verse 37. Verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this to be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast, in her solemn feast. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, 
and they shall know that I am the Lord. He's going to bring us back, brothers and sisters, to our land. Revelation, the second chapter. We're going to read that ninth verse. Revelation, the second chapter, and verse 9. Revelations 2 and 9. Go ahead and read that. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. He said, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of of Satan. I want you to go and read something. We have a paper here that's titled The Ashkenazi Jews. Ashkenazi Jews. Go ahead and read that, brother, that's highlighted. Ashkenazi Jews, also known as Ashkenazic Jews or Akanazism. Akanazism. Did I say that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Ashkenazi Hebrew pronunciation. The Jews of Ashkenaz are the Jews descended from the medieval Jewish communities along the Rhine in Germany from Aus, Aus I, don't, I can't pronounce this. Just keep reading, bro. In the south to the Rhine to the Rhineland in the north. The name of Ashkenazi derives from the biblical figure of Ashkenaz. Well, hold on. Hold on. Let's run over to Genesis. Let's run over to Genesis. Don't, don't go nowhere with that, brother. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Genesis. Genesis 10, I believe it is. Is it 10? Yes. Yeah. Verse 3. Yeah. We, we can pick it up to 2, all right? Okay. <laughs> I'm just asking. You good? You good? Okay. Let's, let's, let's pick it up in verse 2. Okay. <laughs> the sons of Japheth, Goma, and Magog, and Madai, and Javon, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus, and the sons of Goma, Ashkenaz, and Riphthi, and Togorma. Well, understand now, brothers and sisters, these are the children of Japheth, commonly what we call white people, Caucasians, right? Let's go back to where we were at, brother, and read that again. The name of Gentiles, yes, ma'am. The name of Ashkenazi derives from the biblical figure of Ashkenaz, the first son of Goma, and a Japhetic patriarch in the table of nations. Japhetic patriarch in the tables of nations. Well, understand something, brothers and sisters. You are not an Israelite unless you come out of one of the 12 tribes of Jacob. So Ashkenaz, he's not even Shemitic. He's Japhetic, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Is that all you're going to read? That's good. So we can move on a little bit further. We got one more spot. Revelation, the third chapter. And we're going to read verse 9. And that will be last. Revelation 3 and 9. Go ahead, brother. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I am that I have loved thee. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Brothers and sisters, if you are not uh, of the tribe of Israel, one of those 12 sons, brothers and sisters, you are not an Israelite. And the curses will identify you, brothers and sisters. If you, if you find a per people that have these curses on them, you have found the true Israelite of the Bible. And I hope somebody got some understanding out of this lesson. Amen. And now we will have the reading of the announcement. Peace, shalom, shalom. Grace and peace to our brothers and sisters here at the House of Jacob. If this is your first visit, we hope you will come back and worship with us again next Sabbath. 
Um, the uh, classes are now on YouTube now, so you can check those out at Hostel Jacob, Milwaukee class. Uh, brothers and sisters, please adhere to the dress code, House of Jacob. Brothers, please remove any head covering upon entering the building. Do not wear sleeveless shirts, uh, fleece, jogging pants, or any other revealing clothes. Sisters, you must have a head covering. This is required. Hat, scarf, etc. Do not wear pants, scarf, midriff, or see-through blouses. Many dresses, many skirts, off the tops of any kind, tight fitting or cleavage revealing attire, and modest apparel only. The Bibles and scars we have available are for visitors and new members only. If you see or use a Bible or scarf, please return it before you leave. There will be no eating or drinking anything other than water upstairs on the carpeted areas. Please restrict eating and drinking and eating and drinking to the downstairs non-carpeted areas. Weapons of any kind will not be permitted in the sanctuary. This includes, but is not limited to guns, knives, etc. Also on Wednesday nights, we have uh, the Q&A. Uh, starts at 7.30. In the radio station on Sunday, it's 5 o'clock. I got covered behind me there. Okay. The cut behind me. So Wednesday nights at 7.30, we have the Q&A, so the doors are open. And on Sundays, uh, AM 1560, WGLB, and FM 96.1, uh, House of Jacob has a uh, of uh, lessons. So, and, uh, 5 o'clock Sunday, yes. 5 o'clock p.m.? A.m. Oh, 5 o'clock a.m. <laughs> oh, p.m., sorry. Yeah. 5 o'clock p.m. P.m., sorry. So, uh, with that said, this concludes today's announcements. And as always, please continue to pray for one another. Thank you, brother. Okay, Frank. Also, the calendar that we gave out last week, they don't have the loan of the trunk, which is September 15th. And those calendars will be replaced in ASP. Everybody watched the camera last week. Okay. So bring them back. Yes, yes please. Good. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it? Yeah. All right, we stand and face the roof and we close up. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you, They did good.